The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. Welcome to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To get on board, dial 905-725-1907. Toll free in North America, 1-866-905-7325. Worldwide, 1-866-656-7325. 5477. Send us an email right now. Our email address is in studio101 at gmail.com. And now, ladies and gentlemen, right to your hosts of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Down the Garden Path, where we discuss down-to-earth tips and advice for your plants, gardens, and landscapes. As landscape designers and gardeners, we think it is important and possible to have great gardens that are low-maintenance, and we want to help you make it happen. I'm Joanne Shaw, landscape designer and owner of Down to Earth Landscape Design. I've been designing beautiful landscapes for homeowners east of Toronto for over a decade. With me is my co-host, Matthew Dressing. Welcome, Matthew. Welcome, Joanne. Good evening, everyone. I'm Matthew Dressing, horticulturist and landscape designer and owner of Natural Affinity Designs. Natural Affinity is a landscape design and garden maintenance firm servicing Toronto and the Eastern GTA. Joanne and I enjoy hosting Down the Garden Path each week, bringing you interesting, relevant, and helpful topics to help you achieve a great garden. We learn right along with you from each other, from our research, and from the guests that join us here on the show. As always, we welcome your questions via social media and email. Or calls today. Or phone calls. That's right. They can have phone calls today because it's just you and I. That's right. Uh, so we, again, we want to thank you for joining us uh, here on our live app, uh, Down the Garden Path, uh, right now on Reality Radio 101. Um, and to also let you know that this uh, episode will also be released as a podcast. So you can subscribe to Down the Garden Path podcast on your favorite podcast app for instant updates when new shows go live. And as always, please uh, like and share and comment or review us. Uh, we would love uh, on uh, on that. But I know uh, I never do that to the people that I listen to. I listen to a bunch <laughs> of podcasts. So uh, I understand, right? It's just yeah. one more thing. But we want to thank you for listening to us. Yes. Hello, Matt. <gasps> Hello, Joanne. How are you? I'm this good. Evening? I'm good. Are you? Yes, okay. <laughs> we're in February, so second show of February, Yeah, and our deep dive, are you excited that we're getting to do, um, if you didn't listen to us last week, That's right. we introduced a new um, theme or a new concept for our show, um, is that we were going to do monthly uh, themes, and right. kind of, and that allowed us to do like a deep dive. Right. Right. On a topic that we and last week was like we had tons. I don't remember how many how many questions do we have? Oh, there was like 12 people who wrote in. I know. Amazing. I know. So, so I think uh, people are keen all about houseplants. That's right. Mm hmm. So just so you know how the themes are going to work, this month is uh, houseplants, like That's Joanne right. just said. And then each week we're going to pick one aspect of houseplants mm -hmm. and we're going to, it's all about that. Right. You're more than welcome to write in about all your houseplant questions, mm -hmm. uh, but we are going to focus on more of one specific topic than trying to cover all of it in one big show. Right. Yeah. Right. And that lets us, so we, you know, four weeks in February, we can do a deep dive. If you missed last week, we did a deep dive on orchids, which right. was very cool. I did miss the show. I so wanted to go. 
and I just couldn't get there. I I was not able to go either myself yeah. either. So so I'm uh, regretting that, but I'm hoping that we can visit. Um, our guest had her own business, and I'm hoping um, that I can uh, check maybe pick up a new orchid through her. Nice. Mm-hmm. Maybe next year we'll do that episode live at the uh, Southern Ontario Orchid Society. As Joanne looks directly in the box to Gary. Like, I oh know. I'm like, oh, Gary, <laughs> have you been talking again to him? No, I'm sorry. Nope. But maybe we can do something, you know, maybe not the whole show, but maybe we can do something, Gary. I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing promos on uh, Facebook. Okay. <laughs> You're the uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> we, we, w- anything you want to do, we'll accommodate it. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll think about that. So, uh, so definitely. Um, and so tonight, what are we talking about tonight? And our deep dive on house plants. That's right. So tonight we're going to continue our house plants uh, month theme talk with succulents and cacti. Excellent. Uh, so we'll take a look at some of our favorite succulents and mm-hmm. cacti. Uh, it's definitely a, an ever-growing trend. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, there's no loss of steam, for, especially for succulents mm-hmm. and, and cacti. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Uh, but if you know, if you want to join the conversation, mm-hmm. you can always write us here. Perhaps you have a succulent or cacti question in Studio 101 at gmail.com and don't forget you can send pictures too because this can sometimes be visual i know i have a picture for you for my succulent um so i think if you've got you know a dilemma or a question or what's wrong with this uh you yes it's always fun to try to describe it in email but uh (laughs) in words but if you want to send us a picture right gary they can send a picture through absolutely okay so yeah so that uh, can be a big help Send us your pictures of cool and unusual cacti. That's right. And and, and, uh, succulents. That's right. That's right. That would be great. And I'm excited because I think um, succulents are all over Instagram, aren't they? Oh, they just absolutely everywhere you Mm -hmm. look in some form or another. Right. Yeah. Right. Sure. So why do you think they're so popular? You know what? I think they're just so popular because they, they just have that ease to them. They mm. You can give them that little bit of extra neglect. You can forget them for an extra week of watering mm-hmm. and they do nothing. Mm-hmm. They just sit there. They look pretty. They're green and they're just tough as nails. Yeah. I think they're a little f- funky, too. And I so I don't think they look like the plants your grandmother grew. You know Correct. what I mean? So I think they're they're a little bit more unusual. Um, you know, different kind of colors, like there's like bluish ones and ones with burgundy edges and, and stuff. So I think they're a little unique because in the last, you know, five or six years. For sure. For sure. And yeah. there's always more varieties mm-hmm. being tried and grown en masse to the markets. It's, mm-hmm. it's un- unreal. So Excellent. Excellent. I know we didn't really. You <laughs> no, sorry, you pointed <laughs> at something, and I, I was know, I know. Else. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, like we said, it's House Plant Month here on Down the Garden Path, where all February we're going to answer your house plants questions, and dive into some of the most popular, sometimes daunting house plants, such as air plants, orchids, succulents, and bonsai. Um, and tonight we're gonna, like we just said, take a deep dive into uh, succulents and cacti. Um, I also did want to say that I know many of us um, are kind of craving gardening, right? And it's Mm. inside for most of Ontario, Canada, even lots of the U.S. Nobody's really outside gardening. Um, So I think our houseplants are where we can kind of spend some of that energy and kind of get that uh, that fix. Right. For sure. Um, so I think now is a good time. We're kind of I'm going to encourage everybody to I, I came up with this little three point checklist for um, before we double down on the succulents and, and um, cacti, just any house plant that you may have. Right. Yeah. Um, take tonight after the show <laughs> <laughs> or tomorrow. Um, and I thought, check these three things. So check the soil in your pots. Yeah. Right. Start there. So, OK. Do they need water? Are they being overwatered like mine are? Yeah. Um, are the roots showing? Like, is it something like even your um, your succulents or anything? Like, are you looking and your soil level in the pot is really low and you can see a lot of roots? Maybe you need a new pot. Maybe you need to top up the soil. You know, like, like that's just something, you know, that we instead of just mindlessly just watering, you know, once a week or once every two weeks. I thought, let's just take a step back and just do a little check in. What mm-hmm. do you think? Yeah, no, that's a great idea for sure. For sure. Um, so after you've checked the soil, oh. I what are you gonna say? No, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was I was just thinking of one of those other things, those common questions that I get uh-huh. uh, when the soil is what's that orange and white crust? 
Ah, yes. On the soil, right? And mm-hmm. it's nothing, it's not a fungus or anything, but mm-hmm. it's it's the heavy salt deposits, usually from our tap water. Right. Right. And they will lock up the nutrients and, mm-hmm. and prevent better nutrients from bonding and feeding the soil. So just take, uh, you can just take away that white or orange crust. and Okay, and just scoop it off? Yeah, just kind of take off that half inch or just, you know, that the quarter inch or eighth of an inch, okay. however much is there, and you can top dress with some new soil. Could you use boiled water, like not that the water's still hot, but could you have used different water? Would that be better? Right, right. So something like your distilled water or bottled water with lots of, or with the no almost no mineral content in it. Okay. All those heavier salts, the magnesiums, mm-hmm. the calciums, the chlorines. If you do something like that, they won't really add up as quickly. Oh, okay. So you'll just you'll get much less. There. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my second tip was actually looking at the foliage. Um, mm. Again, I think we're so quick to just you know look at the pot, water it. Okay, move on to the next plant, and not really take a quick good look. Um, so are there some crispy leaves amongst our good leaves, and they need to kind of be aired, you know, taken off? Um, are there, are the leaves faded? I know my, um, wandering Jew plant, I've got lots that are kind of a little pale and gray instead of that vibrant purple. Mm -hmm. Um, are they lackluster and, and looking a little on the dull side or gone yellow? So you can, you know, the pathos on Gary's is doing great in the studio, but sometimes at home they, you know, every fifth one is yellow. And so I just kind of pop those off. Right, right. Right. Um, so, yeah, so if it's looking like it's just meh, sitting there, you know, then maybe it does need some fertilizing. I never was a big p- houseplant fertilizer. Uh, again, I've always kind of leaned towards the neglectful uh, houseplant parent. Um, but I did purchase some, you know, all-purpose uh, and just, you know, li- um, what's it called when you put it in the water? Yeah, water-soluble. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> that <laughs> word sounds like charades. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, just to give it a little boost. Although I have to say that's not really helping my wandering Jew. I think it needs more light. Oh, okay. So yeah. where it is. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of, and what other type of fertilizer do you recommend? Well, I was just, just as we go to the Wandering Jew, I have one as well. Uh-huh. And mine's doing very similar to yours. Like every other leaf is kind of going. Okay. And it's because I let mine dry out like yeah. so bad. It's, yes. It's not good. Okay. Um, but, yeah, you you hit it on, on the head. Um, you know, if you've got just your everyday foliage house plants, just something like a 10, 15, 10. Okay. It's just a nice and all balanced easy fertilizer it's got the nutrients in there uh a few of the micronutrients as well once every kind of six weeks Mm. um as you go kind of like once a month thing versus like every other week right like we would do our annuals in the spring or the summer uh and then if you do have something more like you have more cacti and succulents or you have more african violets or something a little bit more specific take a look to see if they have more specific fertilizers for them Okay. Yeah, and then use you yeah. use those. Use yeah. those. And I also know there's another option, uh, compost tea. Mm-hmm. You can buy that t- uh, tea. I think Lee Valley, different places. <coughs> Pardon. <laughs> um, you you know it's just like steeping tea. You steep you know steep this t- tea bag in your watering can, and then that's more of an organic type of fertilizer. So that's another option. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of thinking about compost when you were saying, mm-hmm. um, you know, just top retop dressing some of the house right. plants. Yeah, even if you just had like a light compost, like a sheep and cow manure and some oh, okay. potting mix mm-hmm. and kind of do it like a half and half or a little lighter on the compost because it tends to be a little heavier. Right. Uh, and mix those up and then every time you water and you top dress, every time you water through the top dressing, it just releases a little oh, bit of more. That's a good idea. Like slower release yes. nutrients, but yeah. very natural. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And that especially for maybe that would work for like the bigger pots, right? Like I've got a big especially. rubber tree plant and a big, you know, if you've got a big um, yucca or something like that, right? Or Benjamin. Mina, yeah, you know, or ficus, yeah. um, something like that. That's a good way to get some nutrients to those kind of bigger rooted uh, plants. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a little cumbersome if you do a big batch and all you've got is like yeah. a dozen four inch plants. Yes, that's a little weird. <laughs> yes, yeah, for sure. Um, and then the last thing I thought is also take another peek at them. In addition to their leaves, look and see are they leaning? Ooh. Are they leggy? 
you know so i think sometimes your tall yuccas or your tall benjaminas like if you stand back and look like they're leaning a certain way or the dracenas right with the really skinny stalks yeah and the long leaves and they're kind of leaning a certain way um that's something where you know you may have to turn them or maybe they're not close enough to the wind they need some more light and you need to kind of scoot them down to some windows just to help them straighten uh, or just flip the flip the pot right yeah sometimes they just need to be turned yeah yep um, and, um, or if the leaves are getting leggy, so this is one, like, so my wandering Jew, my pathos, um, I will, if I find that, you know, I've got a bunch of yellow leaves and after I've taken them off, then I've got a big gap before the more leaves start mm -hmm. that, and I did this at Christmas time when I kind of relocate all my plants to make room for my Christmas decorations. I realized that a lot of my house plants, um, were very leggy and not, did not have a lot of leaves kind of mid, you know, kind of from the pot you know, halfway down the plant, and then the tips were fine. Yeah. Um, I would, I then went and cut them and have soaked them in water, or you could root them in soil. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've made new plants. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. And, uh, or your um, spider plants, you know, they give off all those little babies. Yeah. And so I'm planning on using, so then I'm thinking to myself, okay, as if I need more plants, and you're probably thinking the same thing. I don't really need more <laughs> plants. But you can use those outside in your containers yeah right sure. um yeah so my spider i did a great uh, green and white theme kind of in my, uh, my annual containers last year and the sp spider plants did great they loved it and so i saved those actually from when i bought them for outside and that's what i brought inside and they're doing even what even better so i'm excited to be able to use them again next year yeah. um the wandering jew with that purple silver foliage and burgundy to it uh, mm. also looks wonderful outside so you know, anyway, I just wanted to give those like little houseplant 101, um, you know, do a wander, do a quick look, better look kind of at your houseplants this week. For sure. For sure. And those are all great tips. Yeah. yeah. Taking that closer look. What if there was an insect that's slowly getting in there? Or yes. Like you said, you hadn't cleaned the leaves for a while and, mm -hmm. and maybe there's a gray mold setting in. Yeah. Uh, or, or you, you know, there's fungus gnats that maybe you didn't see that are now rampant for so for sure definitely take a closer look yeah Excellent and sometimes tip. the the plants are up on a like tall shelf so you don't really have a good look at them yeah you, you don't know want something like down. that yeah so if you so write in so if you found anything we'd love to hear from you um i love uh, any of my social media you can which you can find at down to earth.ca the number two um yeah so give us a shout out and let us know if you did have a chance to do this little 101 uh recognizance or some on your house plants and what you found or maybe everything was good uh we i bet love to hear from you wouldn't yeah. we yes exactly you can also find us uh if you're on facebook you can search uh, down the garden path podcast that's right and you can leave some messages and pictures there too and mm -hmm. we can chat with you that way off the air excellent should be fun excellent so that's good. So yeah, so all of those things would also apply to, you know, succulents and cacti. But let's just do our deep dive. Yeah. And yeah. you tell us all about succulents. That's it. Well, I think we're gonna start out with Peter has written in Yes, that's a good question. With an excellent question to start with. Uh Hi, Joanna and Matthew. Uh, maybe a silly question for you. No such thing, Peter. Uh, but what are exactly succulent plants? I'm not sure. Thanks. An excellent question. Mm -hmm. So what what is a succulent? A and cacti are a form of succulents, but mm -hmm. cacti tend to have defensive thorns and spines that right. are a little more, they're sharp. They've yes. got another layer. And a little bit more defense. obvious. And right? A little bit more yes. obvious, right. Yeah. Where, where succulents tend to be smooth, uh, just like a normal leaf. But the main issue, or the main um, differentiation there, Peter, is that succulents are mo have modified vacuoles. So basically what they do is their leaves are extra fleshy, and they're designed to store larger amounts of water. Because where they've evolved and where they've grown from are conditions or areas where water tends to be fairly sparse or comes in bursts. Mm -hmm. For example, the cactus, uh, the desert rains, mm -hmm. right? How often does it rain in the desert? Well, they have tend to have a, a quick rainy season where they do their blooming and do all their thing, but they've got to gather all that water and be able to store as much as they can right. for as long as they can. I think of the aloe vera plant. Would that be considered? That would be a Okay, succulent. so I think yep. that's probably the most popular one. That's a great example. Right? And that would fall into the category of the plant that your grandmother grew. <laughs> <laughs> but it has that thick, stocky, you know, remember if you, if you ever had a family member cut off the leaves to put it on a burn or a cut. Um, so... You know, they certainly are longer and pointed and kind of get bigger, where succulents, the ones at least at the top of my mind, like echeverias, 
Yeah, I think a lot of when people say like succulent and cacti, I think they they definitely think their mind flips to the social media stuff. So, to like you were saying, just not something that's super big, right? Right, like like more tabletop mm-hmm. little kind of guys. Yes, and aloe veras can get absolutely monstrous, right? But you usually your mind flips to something that's you know maybe eight to twelve inches tall and wide, right? Or even smaller, like you were saying, the little hens and chicks, mm-hmm. which are the echeveria or the common name for that echeveria kind yes. of group. But yeah, they're those tropical ones. They're low, they're flat, they're two to three inches wide, maybe a couple inches tall, depending on the form that mm-hmm. you get. Um, is that that's kind of where you were? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So I hope that, uh, Peter, uh, you let us know what you think, if that makes sense. Um, oh, Riley's. okay. Riley's written in. Uh, so hi, love your show. Thank you, Riley. When a plant has some water droplets on top of its leaves, is that a problem with the plant? Every once in a while, I notice a droplet or two on some of my house plants, and I'm not misting them. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Very good question, Riley. Yeah, it sounds like Riley, you have a process called cutation. And so <laughs> See, this is going to be like the sciency episode <laughs> for Matt, who loves to get all sciency. I think so. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Riley, usually it's an indication of water pressure. So there's usually a lot of moisture in the plant or the soil, uh, and the plant is exuding that extra water underneath that pressure. So it shows up either usually on the margins of the leaf, okay. um, is where the gutation will happen. If it's more on the top and it's kind of flat, double check that it's not sticky or gooey, because that would be more of an insect. The okay. sap or the water released from the plant should just just be like a droplet of water should come away easily maybe it has fallen from a leaf edge that was above a leaf if you found it on the top of the leaf so maybe it's it's dripping down but there is no insect so would um like extra humidity in the house be a factor or no it's it's coming from the plant yeah it's usually it's an internal pressure mechanism in the plant okay yeah Yeah. so you can have higher low low pressure but okay yeah Interesting. All right. So hopefully that answers your question, Riley. If you're if you're at home and you double check and you find it's all weird and sticky, uh, we can definitely continue there too. Excellent. Excellent. Scott's on Riley's heels with another question. So hi, I'm a new grower of house plants. As a rule, can you please help me with the proper watering technique and time frame to water my plants? There's so much advice online mm-hmm. and all of it different. Uh, I would not want to over or underwater my plants. Excellent. Well, a lot of that is a little tricky. Yes. Because <laughs> we we need to know what type of plants, right? Because right. each each type of plants, like the ones we're talking about tonight, Scott will need less water. Um, so you can definitely look at um, the foliage. You know, so if mm-hmm. it is something that's very like an aloe vera plant, very succulent, very. Um, I want to say like thick. Yeah, it's right? like very thick and fleshy. Juicy, fleshy, right. you know, then they are would require less. So I would say every three weeks or so. Yeah. You know, and again, it depends also where you are and right. the, the heat in your home. I think maybe for everything, really, the finger test, like really you're going to, until you, because you're new, you're going to ne- literally need to stick your finger in. And if there's, if it's damp, then you're okay. Right. Like, uh, you know, I, I think the... I've always found that the the um, the dead people say, "Oh, I have a black thumb. I can't even grow house plants." I mean, usually it we are killing them with kindness. Totally, right? Totally. We that plants are way tougher. If you think about them, if you visited Florida and seen these house plants growing outside with nothing, you know, um, they they are tough. Yeah. So I think um, overwatering is is kind of the the biggest key. So I think. Uh, until you kind of figure out which ones you have. Mm. And um, I think, you know, sticking your finger in the pot, I wouldn't do more than once every two weeks right now, depending, Mm. right? What would you think? Yeah, yeah. And again, just kind of like what you were saying, it's v- it is very different, Scott, in the way that just everybody lives in their own environment, mm-hmm. right? My house is different than Joanne's house. Right. So what I might be watering every two weeks at my place, Joanne may be able to get away with like every three, four weeks at her place. Right. And it's the environment. So know your environment. You like the sun, because if you've got a lot more sun, which I don't right. have, which is why mine are not drying out. Right. Yes. So you're watering less, mm-hmm. where I'm watering more because I'm in a south window. Ah, there you go. And so my guys are like once a week, once every week and a half, I got to hit them, even the succulents, oh, okay. to a point, just because of that brightness and the length of it. 
Um, to your point about the finger test, uh, another way to do it would be like a bamboo skewer or a toothpick, depending on the size of your pot. Okay. Or even if you get really big, like a wooden spoon. And kind of, you know when you like bake a cake? Or oh, a yes. Yep, yep. Right, right. So when you stick the, the, the skewer in and it pulls out, if it pulls out moist or with soil on it, you don't need, it's not ready for water. Right. She's not ready to go yet. She's not fully baked if you use go with baking. Um, but yeah, like your finger test. If you have dark stuff that comes attached to your finger or the skewer, there's enough moisture good, that's there. Good point. Yeah, yeah, that's a good trip if you don't get your fingers dirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> that's right. Or it'd be able to be faster too, right? Might be very quicker mm-hmm. too. Let it dry out in between so you don't get false readings mm-hmm. on all of them too. Um, but then lastly, Scott, when in doubt, don't. Just yes, that's our advice, right? That's that's what it really boils down to. Mm-hmm. And like you were saying, it, they're, the plants are tough. They've been, it's only in the last twelve thousand years that we've been you yeah. know, cultivating things. So you know, three billion minus twelve thousand. Yes, <laughs> that's how long they've been doing it by themselves. So yeah, yeah. So just take a look, know your environment, and know what plants plants you do have, um, and then just just it's by trial by error. Just kind of mm-hmm. watch each of them, and, and eventually after a month or two, you'll get a rhythm and they'll all tell you tell you what you want right yeah you'll see what they look like wilting you'll see what they look like nice and full and fat and don't be scared too scott if something does wilt they do there's a permanent wilting point and a temporary wilting point and Mm -hmm. as long as you don't let it crisp and go to death it'll come back so Mm -hmm. yeah uh, hopefully that answers your question and if you need more uh definitely feel free and uh we're here so if you're just joining us at the bottom of the hour, we're continuing our month-long dive into houseplant. That's right. It's houseplant month here on Down the Garden Path. And today we're looking at succulents and cacti. So if you're listening live, you can write us now at InStudio 101 with any of your houseplants and or more specifically your succulent and mm-hmm. uh, cacti questions. Excellent. Speaking of which, Sharon's written in. Uh, hi, Joanne and Matt. Thanks for your topic tonight. I know Joanne said that she's not a big fan of fertilizing houseplants, but if they needed fertilizer, is there a generic fertilizer to use? Yeah, I mean, I really wasn't a fan, uh, Sharon, until I realized that mine were kind of suffering. Uh, um, so I have uh, I have b- purchased a bottle of the, you know, it's got like a dropper. The Schultz 10 yes, 10. that's right. The Schultz 10 15 10. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, I, it's easy. It, I can just squeeze the dropper into the watering can and go about watering. Um, although my wonder, it hasn't really helped my wandering juice. So I think it's really the light. Um, so yeah, so I think that's a good generic one. I just didn't want to get into the crystals and the scoop and all that yeah. stuff. So I kind of like that eyedropper one. Um, you know, not because of, you know, brand loyalty or, you know, whatever, you know, it just, I just like that idea, right? It would dissolve right away. I didn't have to worry about spilling the crystals, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So really simple. Super simple. And that's, yeah. I grew up with it. Yes. It's the, the eyedropper. You can make as much or as little as you want. Right. And then they cover all your houseplants. There's an orchid. There's a succulent. There's an African violet. There's a general one. There's mm-hmm. tons of them. So, yeah, I would just do that, Sharon. And then just yeah. number two, you're, we're not doing it every other week or once a week. Um, just we're going to leave it out our plants don't need that much fertilizer they know the days are short they're not as actively growing as much unless you've got the big light conditions and the heat to go with it they're usually kind of more of an ecstatic mode okay until about april yes yeah so that's good and that's where i tend to be i forgetful like okay when is it time to fertilize them again that type of thing so uh yeah. so yeah so i think yeah Schultz, i mean it's not an ad but i think the schultz i think that's i love it i, I love it too i love it you know yeah that's what i order at the garden center yeah Yep. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so there you go. Sharon, thank you very much for your question. Yes. So when we're back to succulent, so, you know, that is a broad term, right? Um, are we saying, like, I think of echeveria, mm-hmm. I think of aloe vera. Are there any others? Or Because echeveria is a really big family. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, Agaveria is, is a very big Echeveria. Yes. Sorry. yes. Echeveria. I know. I, the, lots of people say it differently. Yeah. Tomato, tomato, Echeveria, Echeveria. <laughs> I do the CH like a K. Yeah. <laughs> Stomach. <laughs> uh, but yeah, your Echeverias are your most common ones. So they're okay. just to describe them without a picture. They tend to be flatter with kind of more of an upright center, uh, large like blades and kind of like a world pattern mm-hmm. or a circular pattern around the center point. Uh, they think of almost like shell-like in a way, yeah, right? Yeah. Like that real symmetrial, 
very symmetrical. Thank you. Yeah, very symmetrical. And a shell is a great way, like little fragments of a shell or right. even bigger pieces of a shell. Mm-hmm. Um, or petals of a, like, so it's the leaves, but yet you kind of think of them as the petals of a flower, right? Yeah. In that real layered kind of look. And again, they're tough. Yep. Um, and they tend to be tight to the pot. Uh, and they may shoot up a, uh, f- like if they're going to flower, it's going to be more like a cactus where it like shoots up a spike. Yeah. Almost, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're usually not growing them for the flower. Like it's kind of cool and funky, but you're really growing them for the, the neat texture. And, um, and s- yeah, right? Yeah. You no, know, you're, you did it. You got it. The, the echeveries, especially the, and a lot of the succulents have different colors and um, mm-hmm. patterns on them, different structural kind of, um, what you were saying they're very almost architectural looking in their yeah, appearance yeah um and symmetrical so it's more of an, ar- uh, an aesthetics thing. yes yes yeah. and sometimes it's um you know they tend to be um, on more like they're very green or some might be a little bit more bluey yeah. silver very blue um silver. some are has some variegation like it might be green with a white edge or green with a with a burgundy or a, like a pink edge you know so that's a kind of another thing um, and I think it's cool that some grow um, bigger, you know, they might be more like a one gallon size, mm-hmm. you know, and some are s- tinier. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can, yeah. Different shapes you can find them in. Different yeah. sizes and colors. Yep. And if you've got a really great spot for succulents, a uh, nice sunny window, uh, warm, you can get a lot of that reflowering. And like you were saying, they're not yeah. grown for their flowers, but yes. they're pretty cool. Yeah. And you can, um, so I've seen them where people display them, they, they all stay in their own individual pots. Um, but you can create, like if you uh, wanted to get like a big, not necessarily deep pot, but maybe right. like a, a shallow wide pot. Mm-hmm. And you can put, you know, three or four or five different, not four, odd numbers, <laughs> <laughs> uh, different shapes and sizes and colors in that one pot. And then that gets you kind of more of a bit of a display. Right, right. And kind of like a little mini succulent mm-hmm. kind of, for sure. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, just before we continue on, Steve writes in, oh, shucks, listening in tonight, hoping you were talking about lawn care. Very funny, Steve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding in caps with exclamation points. Love the show. Very informative. Uh, thank you. And Steve. Thanks, Steve. Um, we will be talking about lawn care. Yes, Steve, the whole month of April. Yes, right? the entire the month. The entire of April. month. You guys have been asking all year, all episodes, there's a long question. So we are doing a deep, deep, deep dive, aren't we? That's it. We are going right to the root. That, ah, no pun intended. <laughs> no and the artificial and the alternative and the insects and you name it. So you name it. Shout out to Lawn in April. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's your hashtag. Um, yeah. So, yeah, another group that you often will see with the echeverias is um, the things like Haworthias. So, again, s- fairly symmetrical. They, they tend to spread uh, by little runners and shoots that will come out from the s- underneath the soil, and they'll be very clump-forming. Um, but they're very upright. They've almost got, like, finger-like leaves, like the aloe vera. Okay. But they tend to be very upright. They're dark green. They're really neat with different white stripes or lenticels, little bumps on them. And they, they make a really cool ground cover or mat. Be careful, they do tend to be a little sharp uh, on the tips. But other than that, they're just a very neat, different architectural plant that pop in and mix well with echeverias and, and other things to kind of give you a different texture or shape with some different plants. Another one is the just the pure cacti is probably the next biggest succulent group. Right. And all the many, many, many varieties and types that you get with the cacti. So cacti is... Oh, Joanne's drawing up a, a picture. A picture, yes. Yeah. So this is another use. Is that another? That's a beautiful way to display. That's yes. fantastic. Yes, yes. Um, so a mutual friend of ours, um, she created another something you could do in the summer. I think it's a little hard to do now. Um, and we can post a picture of this on our Facebook page. Definitely. Um, but she created, um, you know, we just talked about like a low dish d- and putting a variety of succulents in that dish. Mm-hmm. And some of them can even cascade. What are these? This is um, baby like tears. Uh, baby yeah. tears. Or, uh, 
or pearls. Oh, string of pearls. String of pearls. It's also like the little looks like little pearls, but they're succulents as well. Mm -hmm. And she did like a moss wreath, actually. Yeah. Um, So you could have it as a centerpiece, you know, like like a Christmas wreaths. Um, But she did it to hang on a door and and she, you know, parted all the I was there and she made it um, parted all the little pockets in the wreath of moss wreath where she stuck in the, the different roots of um of the different plants and i've seen it done it's become popular also on instagram for wall displays yes you know people have done them with picture frames and kind of done different layers of soil and moss and soil and chicken wire and stuff and stuck everything in the um into that and created a, a really neat display. So th- that's a whole other feature. I don't know if I segued on you there, no, but it's a whole yeah. other feature that succulents, you can have a little bit more fun with them and do some kind of cra- almost become crafty with them or unique with them in, uh, in outside or inside the house. Right. 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 So. And that nice firm foliage and that structure that they naturally have really yes. lend themselves to being turned and put on a door or in a picture frame on the wall, right? right. So they're not going to droop over or turn the way that you don't want them to really look. Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, and uh, if you, like, you know, those those brick walls in the patio where you don't know or those fences, right, where you don't know what to do, mm-hmm. um, then that's a really great option. That's right. We're ta- talking more houseplants. Uh, this month and tonight, but there are also uh, hardy succulents and cacti that obviously they're all from outdoors, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, That even here in Toronto, Ontario area, they will overwinter in your garden. So you can use them outdoors and keep them in places like that all year round or tucked into those hard, dry, tough Mm -hmm. spaces in your yard. So keep that in mind too. And for our listeners, I just did, I'm just posting that picture um, from Nancy from Green Art Landscape Design in our uh, Facebook uh, page, Perfect. our Facebook group. Yeah. So just Google, uh, search for Down the Garden Path Podcast Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and join that, and you'll see the picture of the beautiful wreath that she made, um, which was lovely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom's writing in with a houseplant question. He says, hi, I know this question obviously has to do with the weather, but when is a good time to transfer or move all my houseplants outside? Are there any houseplants to never take outside? Uh, I live in Toronto. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tom. That's a good question. Good question. Yeah, Tom. So tropical winter for us in our houseplants usually starts at around 16 degrees Celsius. If you've got them out all year in the summer, we usually see some dips in the temperature overnight that doesn't kill them. You know, that we'll, you know, as the fall approaches, we'll get the odd one that drops to 10 or drops to 8 and everything's still okay. The next day, it's going to be 22 degrees. So that kind of slowly hardens them and seasons them through the winter nights. But we do want to start bringing them in and putting them out when we know that the temperature during the day and l- especially in the spring at night is going to be at least 16 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, are there houseplants to never take outside? No, not really, because all houseplants are from originally from outside, mm-hmm. right? But watch where you put them initially mm-hmm. outside, mm-hmm. because they've adapted to your house. They know that they're not getting that full sunlight. They t- tend not to have as thick leaves. The light is different inside versus out in the sun. So when you move them out, don't go, oh, yeah, it's been in my south window in the winter all, all year. That window, even w- I have a south window in the winter all year, mm-hmm. but that window is going to change and the light in that window is going to intensify and lengthen and you can sunburn your plants. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to start closing my blind or pull them away from the window so that that that, that adjustment occurs, right? right? So right. they don't burn and, and go all weird and glossy. So you can take them outside, but you want to do it slowly. You want to mm-hmm. give them the sun from about that 10, 30, 11 until about 2, 33 for about a week, week and a half. And then you can fully go out in the, the full, full sun. Yeah. But even then, like you should be careful, right? Because I think plants do will get surprisingly sunburned. Well, I was gonna say, yeah. Right? So I mean, I think that hot direct sun and that west, uh, south even, right. right? I mean, I think you're okay to to um, you know the shade of a tree, shade of the house, that type of thing. Right. So exactly. Two more caveats. Yeah, definitely. All make sure that you know what the plant is too, right? Mm. 
yeah. if it is a shade plant or like an understory plant naturally where they're they are tropical from you know you do want to put them out in in a, like a shady location right right under a nice bright indirect tree or something with traveling dappled sun through the garden um and what was going to be my second one oh, i sorry. don't know I forget. I'll, I'll come back to it. Yeah, too, but we'll come back to it. Th- things like uh, fern, like think of some shade ones, right? right. Um, like in the in like a Boston fern in the house, we'll take some bright light. But outside, I think the bright light is too much for it, right? Mm. And you'll find that they like they just crisp up like chicken. Yeah, <laughs> like they like just woof, right, and they because you just can't keep enough uh, water in them. Right. And moisture and misting and that type of thing. So that they would definitely be something that would tolerate more light inside the house. But then when you bring them outside, they should really be in a shady and very part sun location. Yeah, and that's one of my things with Boston ferns because we see them a lot in our area. People love them because of their shape and how wispy and yes. whimsical they are. But you can see when they're in the full sun because mm-hmm. they go like a green yellow color. Yeah. And they're alive, but they're just, you can tell them Barely. they're so angry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel the same about people doing that with hostas. Like they say, well, the hostas are growing. I'm like, yeah, he's growing, but he's not happy. He's alive, but he's not happy. Look at that foliage. Yeah. yeah. Look at that foliage, you know. So that's not really the color it's supposed to be, you know. Um, spider so yeah, plants. Spider plants. Your philodendrons, your pothoses, right? Mm-hmm. They cling to trees and climb things. Your orchids. Right, they tend to be more of in those partial shades. Um, speaking of cacti, one of my favorite cacti is Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, that Schlumbergian group. Uh, but they are forest cactus. Right, they right. Grow, They're not the prickly right. cacti. They've got some thorns on the end, or some very fine, uh, sharp pubescence that you get a sliver from. But but they're in the shade. They are in a in a wooded area, much like an orchid. Right. Mm-hmm. So just knowing knowing your types and where she belongs um but yeah definitely watch the sunburn that's one of the main things that people do is they are so excited they push them right out into the full sun Mm -hmm. and they just burn okay they just wipe out now what are your thoughts on so we brought them outside so thank you tom so we've kind of got them outside we've got them it's taken a couple weeks to kind of get them assimilated do we change do they need fertilizing once they're outside do we need them more often do they need it even less often what do you think um outside change does that change what else does it change usually especially in the spring the days are growing longer and they're going out so they're gonna they notice this and they're gonna go into an active growth period okay so instead of doing it once every like four to six weeks during the winter time this is where we can come back closer up to being it's mid-may end of may depending on where you are um tom usually it's the end of may for us here in uh, the gta but that's where we can come up to that two weeks okay type of thing because they're actively growing they're actively dividing that sort of thing. Right. They're so almost like our growing. annuals, right? So Much if you're like watering your coleus or your annuals outside, um, then you can every two weeks, right? Right. Um, would we want to do that slow release fertilizer that we use for annuals sometimes? You know, the little um You could do like like your pellets. Yeah. Just like your little granular fertilizer, yeah. just an all balanced, whatever brand that you like to use. Yeah. Yep, like a ten 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 or a twenty twenty twenty. Okay. For sure. Because, yeah, because it's more work. Because, again, we're all about low maintenance. So yeah. we don't want you, even though we, we, we just recommended the indoor house plant one from Schultz, mm-hmm. outside, we don't want to have you having to make different watering cans for different plants, right? We want to make it easier. So if if your regular 10-10-10 water soluble in your container is what you're using to water your, your other annual containers, um, then go ahead and do that with your tropicals and your house plants. Right. right. And then note too, are they flowering or are they just simply foliage? Right. Right. Okay. You don't need to hit the high phosphorus into the hostas when they're going to maybe produce flowers for two to three weeks. They're not really showy and most of us cut them off. You yeah. can just use your 20, 20, 20 or okay. your 10, 10, 10. But if, yeah, you're like begonias and things like that, they're mm-hmm. pumping out flowers, they're going to need something different. But yeah, yeah. So definitely that's where I kind of have a rhyme depending on, and it's usually for more for outdoors, but you're... Oh, um, you have a rhyme. Or or kind of a way of looking at it. <laughs> kind of that, that Easter, which can be early or late, right. which is the tricky part. But Easter to Thanksgiving, so through the warmer months, it's about every two weeks depending on who it is. Oh, okay. But then when you go from Thanksgiving back through the cold to Easter, 
So the other way around, back yep. to Easter, you're once a month, once oh, every four to six months. Oh, that's a great tip, so everybody. We all know Thanksgiving. Yep. We all know Easter kind yep. of thing, right? For most of us And both of those move America. slightly. Like, it's not so written in stone, right? Because right. both Thanksgiving moves and Easter moves. And so does the weather. Right. 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 So, but they're just kind of like cues, the calendar mm-hmm. cues to go, okay, hold on. Days are growing longer. It's Easter. We need to move up our, our fertilizing. I'm not really maybe noticing it, but the days yeah. and the plants are. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I usually say. Okay. So I said I brought, so I'm going to go back to, these are Ooh. my succulents. So I was bringing them outside. Ooh. So I had a couple of really cool, like like I said, low, um, wide pots. Uh, and I, it's just something different at my front steps, right? And I, and I, and I created one really big one and one small one. And um, this is the big one. So when I filled it to, this is three years old now. And so I filled it with a d- bunch of different size uh, chavarias and stuff. Well, the one, the big one, like, so I had one big one, a bunch of different, some other sizes. Um, so then because they're in a pot, I have them outside all summer, but then I've been bringing them inside for the winter. Mm-hmm. And now they're look how tall and leggy it is. Yeah, the one because you can't see the picture. Oh, you can't but tell. Can you? No, tell no, like I can. But oh yes, I'm our, listeners our, listeners. Can, our <laughs> listeners can't see the picture. Um, yeah, so it's gone. There's like a nice eight inch thick leaf scarred stalk that's holding up yes. a beautiful head of foliage. Yes, but it's still not as full as it it was, right? Right. Um, so what did I do wrong or what can I do? Yeah, it was probably just going back and forth and moving the little guys because they're nice and flexible and herbaceous still. They look like they're kind of turning around. Yeah. The other guy they grabbed to the window. Um, so it's probably just over the last few years, you've had them in highlight and then you've moved them and turned them. Mm -hmm. And so they're starting to turn. They've dried out or been slightly overwatered. So she loses a few of those lower leaves. Right. What the heck? Uh, and then continues to grow. Um, it looks like a flapjack succulent. So big, no broad, <laughs> silvery green leaves. Yes. Yeah, and they usually have like a little bit of a red, mar- very thin red line along along the margin. They're okay. very broad. They can kind of get a yellowy. Yeah. Uh, just just for people who are, what are we looking at? Yes, um, yes. I will, I'll put, again, we're going to make you go to our podcast uh, page on Facebook, so yeah. Down the Garden Path podcast, and I'll post a picture of my uh, my little arrangement. So I'm thinking that I need to separate them. You could, you could, you could, you could separate them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, or you could leave them there. What uh, you might do is just have this, the picture of the I can see that there's a big one in the back for yep. our listeners and then two smaller ones in the front. Mm-hmm. But it looks like the window is behind the big guy. Yes. Kind of thing. So just for the other two little ones to kind of... Oh, kinda rotate like the plate, rotate the bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of so like normally it's at center facing the window and then you do a quarter turn to the right mm. and then come yeah, back to good center. Good idea. Yeah, no, I haven't done that. Yeah, and that's something we talked about at the start of the show, right? Was to doing that rotating. Yeah. Yeah. She, they look healthy. They look yeah, healthy. Yeah, they do. And my smaller one... I think I have a smaller pot as well, and it, it's a little leggy. This the bigger one, which isn't this big, in the center of the smaller one, it's not quite so you know big. But mm. um, yeah, so um, it, you know, it was interesting. It was kind of a curious experiment uh, for me to try, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So the next level is that you you can take one of those little leaves. Those little take oh, lower leaf yes, yeah, and start propagating the new ones. Yeah, we have your to talk about some container. of that. Oh, we're running out of time, but we have to talk <laughs> about that's the other cool thing yeah, about echeverias. We have two questions. Okay, all right, we're gonna talk. We have to talk about the cool thing about them. Also, everybody is that you can make your own plants. You buy one and you can make your own. So we'll get to that in just a second. We will. Um, so go. <laughs> uh, Bill writes in. Hello, new listener from Mesa, Arizona. Ooh. Thank you very much, Bill, for tuning in. Yes. Uh, Bill says, fantastic show. Does the watering rules change a bit when you bring your house plants outside? Uh, for sure. Uh, I know the rain has a lot to do with watering, but if it doesn't rain for a while, should we water every couple of days due to the heat? Thanks. Yeah, take a look. Again, depending on where you are, your mess of Arizona, it's very hot and, and dry there. I think you have a little less humidity than more of a drier heat than yes. we do. Um, but yeah, definitely, Bill, take a look at how long those plants are going through all of that water. And then again, knowing the type, are you having more succulent types mm-hmm. or do you have more of a foliage, more of a deciduous, very thin leafy? Grassy like, or like, yeah, oh, leafy. Grassy is leafy. another w- good way to s- yep. describe it. 
yeah, the leafy types will need a lot more water, whereas the succulents can go two, three, four weeks mm-hmm. in your area, depending on the weather and yep. whatnot, where they, they're, they've they evolved to, to deal with that. Yeah, they're so a bit tougher. Right. Lastly, the rain, and I always say it to everybody, whether you're inside with houseplants or outside with your perennials, the rain never waters anything unless it's two days long and steady as, like, everything. Okay. And the thought about it, think about it this way. We're going to get rain. Great. It rains all day for us. Great. Five millimeters, right? Yeah. Or, or like an eighth to a quarter of an inch, right? Now imagine that fell on the plant. Yeah. Where are the roots in that plant? Oh, Not the five millimeters. It's like another eight inches below, Yeah. right? That's where you need the water to penetrate. Mm-hmm. So the, the mm-hmm. rain in that cool weather is great. They're taking a nice breather like we would after a hot, dry spell. But, but you do need to make sure you water nice and deep to the bottom of that pot too, Bill. Yes, definitely. And and we mentioned at the st- start of the show, too, mm-hmm. like to take a skewer or a wooden, you know, a wooden spoon, like the handle of a wooden spoon yeah. and kind of do a deep dive. Because I would think that, you know, most of your plants would be loving that heat and loving your weather. Right. Um, so that uh, you, you can kind of keep an eye on them that way. Right. 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 Excellent. Excellent. Oh, and Alexis is uh, doing us a lead in to our next month almost. Ooh, right. She's a couple of weeks ahead. Uh, yes. But Alexis writes in, hi, how soon can we start veggies from seed inside? And when can I take them outside? Are vegetable plants more hardy for transplants than house plants? Uh, so to just quickly, the, the start the vegetables, take a look at what you're going to start, Alexis, because a lot of them, like your tomatoes and your peppers, they need a lot of start time. They take so many days to germination, like 120 days okay. to germination, but you have to count that backwards from when you want to harvest it. So if it's, you want to harvest, if it's going to be like a fall harvest, mine is 120 days until there that you can basically harvest that fruit. Whereas, you know, September 1 minus yeah. 120 days, which is four months. So now you're July, June, May, you're the beginning of April, end of March to start to plant right. some of those things out. Things like strawberries take even longer to even just to germinate. They're like a 40-day germination mm. type thing. Mm-hmm. So, And then they've got all that lead time. So just take a look at most of the seeds that you grow will have instructions in the, the days. Yes, in the details on the back of the package. On the back, frost, right. like the fr- Also the frost dates. Depending on where you are as well, that'll right. also be another guiding, you know, here in Ontario, we kind of go by the May 2-4 weekend right. and kind of work back, you know, so that'll say start sowing, you know, six weeks from frost date. Before hard frost. Before right. Before last frost. Yes. Yeah. That kind of thing. So that'll be, but it is soon. I know there's lots of people on Facebook groups and talking about it and they've been st- all starting their seeds, but it's just the beginning of February, and I think for the most part they're too early. Right, and and I, then I, you know they're keen. I get it, and but they're the ones that in six weeks are going to be complaining that things are dying and things are leggy and things aren't doing well because they just were keen and started a little too soon. Right, and and be aware of when you see that happening. Where are they? Right, because Bill in Arizona can do that a little differently than we can here in Toronto. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So so just keep an eye eye there too, Alexis. Yeah. But yeah. Average last frost date in your area is usually when you can take them safely outside, watching for some frost. Make sure you're hardening them off, adjusting them to the lower temperatures and inside. And we'll talk all about that next month, too. We'll go into a lot more detail on how to do that right. and what you need to do to accomplish that successfully uh, for outside, uh, for your seeds and vegetables. Yes. As far as your house plants, no, they're, they're pretty much as easy. Just, again, watching that you're hardening them off and putting them out at the right time in the right conditions to be successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say the vegetables are a little bit more sensitive than the, than the, the house plants. The hardening off process, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I think yeah. house plants are pretty tough to take outside, um, but I think the vegetables can be a little bit more... Uh, more because of their life. So they're all yeah, usually they're little, all little seedlings. They're all little tiny, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we're excited about our uh, March shows, all about growing um, from the se- from seed all the way up So uh, to get you to the garden. So we are... Stay tuned for that show okay Alexis thank you for your question I do want to talk we just got a couple minutes um, but I do want to say about the cool thing about the succulents right yeah is that those leaves can fall off or we can cut them off 
And then can you give us a quick summary on what we do to grow more baby? Now, this takes forever, but <laughs> <laughs> my impatient self. But what do you think? Yeah. So, yeah. So your echeverias um, are super easy at it. I think that's where you, what you were thinking. Yes. Of. Yeah. So the bladed leaves that kind of whirl around uh, the echeveria or your hens and chicks, mm-hmm. usually they can fall off or you can break one off. And where you broke it off, a wound will form a callus. And basically those cells differentiate. They realize they need need root cells or the conditions are there uh, to, you know, become another plant. And they'll start to set root and a whole new plant will grow out of that one point. So you can start with one of those little leaves and and basically take soft herbaceous cuttings and, and propagate brand new plants. Okay. So each leaf will create one new single plant. So I've seen people online where they so they they've broken them off and then they let them like set on the table or in a on a in a box or something to kind of dry to callus like you Thank said you, right yeah. so they callus and usually they need to callus like first. two days two yeah. to three days oh, okay and then you can kind of lay them in in a, a potting type soil which would be more of a cactus um, succulent type soil right a little drier. Mm-hmm. And or even sandy too, right? Yeah, a little sandier. Yeah. yeah, and then you can just kind of lay them in, right? Because they kind of lay. You just have an open tray, yeah, yeah, and just literally line them up. And okay. So once they start growing, you can then just start slowly potting them up. Right. You can remove them and. Yeah, so it's a fun thing. It's something I think kids would love. It's super fun. You know, fun. it's super fun. Um, it's not, you know, something they're going to look at every day, but I think it is uh, a really cool way to do a, an experiment, don't right. you think? Right, Yeah. See yeah. how things grow and change. Mm-hmm. And your spider plants are another mm-hmm. easy, super easy yes. way to do it. Or your pothos. And pothos is great, yeah. Right? Cactuses, they tend not to. You right. can't really chop pieces of those. Or right. Uh, and if you can, I don't know how to do it. And yeah. I wouldn't jump into yes. doing that. What about now, would jade <laughs> plants be considered? Jade is also another succulent. Okay. Correct. So yes. same way as the echeverias, one okay. of those little leaf segments. Yep. Yep. They tend to have a bit more of a trunk. So I know I have mm-hmm. one. I have, um, we have this big windowsill actually in my son's, uh, my two sons have a bathroom that has one of those, a big windowsill, east facing though. And I think think I was moving the house so I had some house plants there and I was moving and so a branch of the jade plant broke off and I had nothing like to put it in right so at that moment so I have like a more of a trough like long narrow uh, planter also on the shelf full of spider plants so literally I just like stuck it in that (laughs) in that for now right well of course I completely forgot Mm -hmm. about it and so it rooted in the center (laughs) of that uh, you know now no extra effort whatsoever but I created another little baby jade plant yeah Um, so it's pretty tough and I've seen um, I was visiting my cousin um, good shout out to Deanna and um, and uh, they had gotten like two that were like my height yeah. jade plants that were you know t- like 40 50 years old that they bought from somebody else who no longer had room with for them nice. and they were hundreds of dollars oh yeah you know like they are a slow growing really cool really interesting so google jade plant um, that's a really you probably if you've been to a Chinese food restaurant there's usually one oh, at yeah. the front door you've seen them. right that kind of thing so yeah so that's another variety and if you ever touched it you know the same thing the leaves are fleshy and thick mm-hmm. yeah so I'm excited we are running out of time we but are. this was a great show I want to oh I'm gonna thank everyone I want to add one more thing sure cactus flowering cactuses a lot of people like to see their flowers because they're cool unusual okay some species can take up to 50 years to flower Ooh. if you want it to flower or flowering cactus buy the ones that are in your garden centers flowering already okay or else you're waiting in another three to five decades before it'll do it okay Just last little tip okay buy flowering cactuses outside of that yes we're at the end of another show can you I believe know it? Thank you to Peter, Riley, Scott, Sharon, Steve, Tom, Bill, and Alexis for writing in mm-hmm. your fantastic houseplant questions. You can always reach us here at instudio101 at gmail.com if you come up with another question, maybe tomorrow night when you're having dinner or watching another show. You can always write us here. We always get it. That's right. Don't forget to find us on our own social media mm-hmm. and uh, websites. Joanne? Um, at my website, downtoearth.ca with the number 2. And uh, you can find all my social media links there. Matt, That's you right. are? NaturalAffinityDesigns.ca with all my social media links and everything there. Thank you to Gary for helping us uh, produce another fantastic show. And uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I think I'm stalling. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and next week, what are we talking about? 
the uh, next show, deep dive on house plants. We're going to be talking air plants. Air plants. That's right. Very cool. With uh, David from David's Air Plant Corner. So Excellent. Tune into then. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning into Down the Garden Path. And we hope you have a fantastic week. And uh, you're listening here on Reality Radio 101. Thank you for joining us. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101.